Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for making us whole. Thank you, Jesus, for another day. Thank you, Jesus, for this grace and this moment in time that you've given us to truly just lift up the holy and the matchless name of Jesus. I'm the, I am Bishop D.R. Hunt, and I greet you today in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus, declaring unto you that I am in love with Jesus. He is the Lord of my life. He is the best thing that ever happened to me. There is nothing and no one that can do me like Jesus can. He is my all in all. My prayer for you on today is that Jesus is also your Lord, that he's your everything, that uh, he is the love of your life, that he is your all in all. Don't make Jesus be our Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Aren't you glad about it? I don't know what happened yesterday, what happened last night, but you got to know Jesus is, is still in full control. Aren't you glad about Jesus? He is great and greatly uh, to be praised. Uh, this is this is uh, so important that when we uh, have these opportunities that we take advantage that we allow Jesus to just saturate us and that's uh, in, in addition to uh, what I just said I want to also pray today uh, that Jesus gives us uh, our daily bread as he commended us to do that we ask for the daily bread the thing that we need to sustain us to satiate us to cover us to keep us uh, the thing that we need on today and I believe that for you right now whatever you have need of today I'm believing that Jesus is meeting you right at that need in the name of Jesus Let's Let's get into the word. We'll be as brief as the Holy Ghost will allow. Uh, I don't want to be long with you, but I do want to be effective because that's how our God operates. Uh, that's who our God is. Let's see. Um, if you would open your Bibles to the gospel according to John chapter number six, uh, verse 26, 27, 28. Uh, I'm, I'm reading out the King James Version. Again, that's uh, John chapter number six, ch chapter number 10, excuse me, uh, verses 26, 27, and 28. Um, and what I, what I want to talk to you about today, or what, what we want to reason on today is this, um, in response, in response. Uh, and the Bible reads, uh, but ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Uh, Jesus' sheep are known by the response they follow his voice. Jesus said the tree is known by the fruit which it bears. Uh, the sheep are known, Jesus' sheep. He said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Not only does he know his sheep, but the sheep have to have a response then to the voice of Jesus. That what we operate is in response. That the only thing that we are going to be held accountable for is not what happens in the atmosphere, not what people say to you, not what people do to you, but how it is that you respond. Because Jesus' sheep have a different response. The potency, the power uh, is in the response. Jesus said, ye believe not because ye are not my sheep. And then he goes on to say, here's why, my, here's why you're not my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. That here we are in 2022 and we got to be able to hear the voice of Jesus and respond and continue to follow him. Jesus also told us, if you continue in my words, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. All of this comes with us understanding uh, that I need to be in response to the voice of Jesus. All right, I wanna share a few points uh, uh, with the short time that we have together and uh, we'll let Jesus have his way. Uh, first point I wanna make is you need the appropriate response. You need the appropriate response. Uh, uh, St. Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 and 17, uh, the Bible said, but whereunto shall I liken this generation? It's like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, we piped unto you and you have not danced. We mourned unto you and you have not lamented. He said that this generation understands about not responding, but that's the same thing that we're doing when it comes to Jesus. We're not responding. We don't have the pro proper the appropriate uh, response. And so if Jesus is calling you, you got to be following him. If you are his sheep and you hear his voice, then it is necessary. It is needful. It is required that you follow him in order to be his sheep. He said, the other people that are not my sheep, they don't believe me. And so they don't follow me. But my sheep hear my voice. I know them because they follow me and I give unto them eternal life. So it doesn't matter what else is going on or what else is operating, what other uh, principalities and powers are in place. Jesus has already afforded these liberties for his sheep. 
He's the good shepherd. That's also in John. <laughs> he lays down his life for the sheep. Also in John 10, uh, verse number 10, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. What I'm telling you is there's some benefits, there's some blessing, uh, there's some things that is awarded unto the sheep. David said in the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There are some things when Jesus is your shepherd, when you are his sheep, that just comes with being connected with him. All you got to do is follow. All you got to do is hear his voice and operate in response. That's all you got to do. All right, the next point I want to make, when you are his and you hear his voice, it does not matter what condition you're in, you can't help yourself that the response of the sheep or the believer to the voice of Jesus or his commands, it simply means this, that there is a, a compulsion. You can't really help yourself. Uh, John chapter 11, verses uh, 40, 43 and 44. Uh, and the Bible reads, when he had thus spoken, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead, came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. Uh, Jesus called forth, now you understand the, the story of Lazarus, I'm not gonna even go all the way in it, but Lazarus was dead. And I like the way that they announced that he who was dead. When Jesus called him, he was in a dead condition, a lifeless condition. That's what dead means. It means to be absent of life. And so he was absent of life, but Jesus told them, I am the life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when Jesus shows up as the life, he calls Lazarus by name. He says, Lazarus, come here. And Lazarus, who was dead without life, heard life call him and life came back into him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is what Jesus does. This is who he is. That means it doesn't matter what you're in. I know you, uh, you've you been lied on, cheated, talked about, all this other stuff, but it doesn't matter what condition you're in. You've been heartbroken. You've been um, frustrated. You've been angry. You've been depressed. When Jesus calls you and you're his sheep, whatever that thing is, it doesn't matter. His voice compels you to come after Jesus. That's why you didn't lose your mind all those many years ago. That's why you didn't give up when you felt like giving up because there's something about his voice. He said, my sheep hear my voice. And he called Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, come up, come forth, come here. I commend you. He didn't tell nobody to grab Lazarus. He didn't need no assistance. He said, Lazarus, come here. And Lazarus came forth. But the thing that had Lazarus in that condition was still on him. That's why if you follow Jesus, continue in his word, um, the truth is what sets you free. He's the truth. So when Jesus, when Lazarus called Jesus, I mean, when Jesus called Lazarus and he came forth bound in those uh, grave clothes, listen to what Jesus said. Uh, he was bound hand, hand, head, head to feet. He was covered all the way. Jesus said, loose him and let him go. You're Jesus' sheep, and you need to be in proper response. And many times the world thinks they have you in a condition where you cannot get back up, in a condition where you have been a disabled, where you're unable to operate in Jesus' word, where you've been cut off. But all it takes is being in response to his voice. They gave up on Lazarus. Lazarus was dead. He was wrapped up in grave clothes. It has been too many days. They said, Lord, he stinketh. But Jesus didn't care about none of that because Lazarus was his sheep. And Jesus then called Lazarus and said, Lazarus, come in. And even though he used to be dead, even though you used to be depressed, even though you were angry, even though you were suicidal, even though you were, uh, even though you were, um, uh, lying and, and cheating all even though you used to be all those things when Jesus calls you you just can't help yourself you just can't help yourself all right next point I want to make if he's talking to you it's for you if he's talking to you it's for you uh 
Isaiah 6, uh, chapter 6, verse number 8, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, here I am, send me. Too many times we want to ignore what Jesus is trying to say to us because he's uh, waiting on him to um, do something, another sign, another wonder to prove to you uh, that it's for you. But if he's talking to you, then he's talking for you and you just have to respond. The only thing, he didn't say Isaiah, um, Isaiah, this is for you. What he said was, uh, who shall I send and who will go for us? And then Isaiah said, if you're talking to me, I know you're talking about me. Then he said, here I am, send me. Listen, it's time if ever we're going to get activated, engage, and do what Jesus said to us. If ever we're going to understand this is Jesus' time and it's time to be in response. And if you can hear his voice, you should be in response to that voice. Now is that time. Now is that time. All right, I'm just about done, just a few more. Um, next point I wanna make, it's not what they call you, but what you answer to. The world is calling you something different from what Jesus called you. In John, uh, John chapter number 10, uh, verses three, four and five, uh, the Bible reads to him, the porter openeth and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. And when he put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers. For they know not the voice of strangers. Do you understand the world is calling you, but it's, uh, they got to say, it's not what they call you, but rather what you answer to. Jesus said, no, I, I know my sheep. They hear my voice and he calls his own sheep Jesus sheep by name and then leadeth them out. He calls his own sheep by name. By name. What name? Jesus. If you respond to the name, he calls his own sheep by name. By name. Not by your name, not by this exact name, this name that your parents get. There is no other name given. His name is above every other name. So when he calls you and you respond to the name, are you hearing what I'm saying? My sheep, I call them by name and then I lead them out in the name of Jesus. If you learned anything, you know there's some potency, some power. There is potential in that name. In the name of Jesus, when he, uh, in the name of Jesus, devils have to flee. In the name of Jesus, sickness has to lose its hold. In the name of Jesus, doors have to open. In the name of Jesus. So when uh, he said, no other voice will they follow. Nobody else is going to operate in that name. Let me tell you something. Here's the thing. Um, Here's the thing that you that you know, they can trick us, they can do a lot of things and say a lot of things that you may not be the smartest person in the world. I know I'm not. Uh, there's a lot of things you can trick me with. But when it comes to Jesus, my heart is fixed. My mind is made up. I understand what that name is able to do. I understand what it means when he called it. So he called his own sheep by name. Every time that name is mentioned, every time I call on Jesus, something happens. When he calls them, listen to what he does, y'all. He leads them out. He leads them out. This is also John 10. He said, all, that, uh, all, uh, all that's in my hand, uh, they can't be plucked out. They don't got, uh, listen, they can call you whatever. They can say they remember you from back in the day, but they, uh, Jesus got you. They can't do nothing about it. Jesus loves you. They can't do nothing about it. Jesus has plans for you and they can't do anything about it. They can't pluck, uh, pluck you out of his hands. I'm in the hands of Jesus. Aren't you glad about it? Aren't you glad about it? Um, so when you're following, when you, uh, um, when you're learning, when you're moving, whatever you're doing, when you're adding on to something, you can't afford to miss a day. Uh, you can't afford to miss a day. Uh, you have to respond immediately. Because if I'm uh, moving is a, um, 
it's a, 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 a static state. It's, it's, it, 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 moving means it, it is, is, is happening. Uh, there's an energy being released. So when, when, it is that, um, when it is that you're moving, you gotta understand that you can't afford to take any days off. Uh, so that's my next point. You, you can't afford to take any days off. Uh, Hebrews 3, chapter 15, I mean, Hebrews chapter number 3, excuse me, verse number 15. Uh, while it said, today, if ye will hear his voice, Harden not your heart as in provocation. Don't make him work around you. Let him work through you. If you hear his voice, respond. If you hear his voice, be in response. While I said today, if ye will hear the voice. And I want to let you know that what is implied here is something that the church needs to take, uh, take hold to. We need to understand this um, because we will oftentimes act like Jesus is not talking. But are we listening and looking for his voice? My sheep hear my voice. We have to be able to hear his voice and no other voice. There is a lot of noise. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of stuff talking. There's stuff happening in the media. There's wars and rumors of wars. There's all this other stuff. But Jesus said, in spite of all that, my sheep are still able to hear my voice. And when they hear my voice, they respond today. I'm sure you have come to the same, uh, the same learned behavior that I've come with is that if Jesus says do it, you need to do it right now. You need to do it in a hurry. You need to do it in a hurry because uh, your life is dependent on it. Because he's the vine, we're just the branches and without him, we can do nothing. All right, lastly, if Jesus called you, he already has you covered and he just needs your response. If Jesus called you, he already has you covered and just needs your response. Romans chapter number eight, uh, verse number 30 and 31, moreover whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things if God be for us? Who can be against us? You understand we gotta be able to say, uh, what it is in our response to these things, knowing what Jesus has already planned, coordinated, put in place for us, predestinated, that what he had already called us, justified us, and glorified us before the situation ever even happened. So when the thing comes, we're not in response to the thing. We're in response to our God. Come here. Uh, Jeremiah said, all these things come on us, all these trials ask the same question. Is there anything too hard for God? He doesn't respond, we respond. Uh, that we, uh, he's the vine and we're the branches. And so therefore the fruit then comes from us. You understand that we, that we are then the vessel that he uses to expel the truth, the, the, the fruit. And so uh, the spirit, the things that he's trying to transmit, that we are stewards, that we are his children, that we are his husbandry. Uh, 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 let me go on a little bit, that we are the planting of the Lord. And so therefore, if we're in proper response, we understand that we are already covered. It's already done. They can't pluck you out. They can't pull you out. They can't take you out. Jesus already knows what he has planned for you. You shall be glorified. He said he also glorified him. And so therefore, what shall we then say to these things? We should be in response to the shepherd. We should be in response to Jesus' word and that is, if God be for us. You ain't got to like me. You ain't got to pray with me. But I know who Jesus is. And I'm in love with Jesus. And Jesus, he's in love with me. Aren't you glad about it? I'm going to stop right there. But you ought to be glad about that. If nothing, else, it's good to know who Jesus is. Today is his day. He's still in full control. He still got all power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Jesus. Listen, I want to give you this call for salvation. This last call. Uh, I want to declare unto you that if you ever needed Jesus in your life, you need him right now. I want to confess to you the Jesus that come down the flesh over 2,000 years ago. He suffered, bled, died on the cross, went down the grave. Stay there three 
days and three nights. On the third day, Jesus rose again with all power in heaven and in earth. If you believe that with all of your heart, repent of your sin, confess with your mouth that Jesus he did rise again, you shall be saved. The Bible said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I encourage you to try Jesus for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Try him for yourself. If today you're choosing Jesus, if today you're putting him on, if today you're making him your choice, reach out to me at coj1.org. Let me know that Jesus is doing great, great things in your life that we might celebrate and lift him up together. Those of you are recommitting yourself, reaffirming yourself to his will, his word, and his way. Also, reach out to me at clj1.org. Let me know that Jesus is doing great things for you, that we might lift up the name of Jesus together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, I want all you believers, we want to agree together in faith, even right now, knowing that our God is God. Uh, he's in total and complete control. His word cannot come back void. He'll do exactly what he said. This is time for people of faith to live by faith. Uh, that even right now, I want you to agree with me, even in faith, that there, uh, that there are some people who, uh, who are going through a dark time, a heavy time. Uh, uh, there are some people going through some situations, some, some uh, uh, a desert, a, a midnight season. They're just having a, a rough go of it. They've been oppressed and depressed, but I want you to agree with me and believe right now that Jesus is the deliverer, that he has the power to set them free, that he's lifting up somebody's bow down here, that he's breaking the yoke off their life, that he's removing their burden, that he's restoring their joy, that somebody's being delivered and set free today, right now, this moment, in the name of Jesus. Somebody is responding to that voice. I want you to believe with me that Jesus, he is the healer, uh, that he has paid the price, that by his stripes we are already healed, that every sickness, every pain, every suffering, disease that we have, we learned it before the throne of his grace, believing that he's already done it. And whatever that thing is, we commend it right now to loose his hold in the name of Jesus, believing that healing is ours, that that pain is leaving, that sickness is leaving, that disease is leaving, and we're being healed today in the name of Jesus. We believe that Jesus is not only our healer, but he is the healer. Therefore, I want you to agree with me in Jesus' name that he can heal anybody. We know some people who need Jesus to touch them. We know some people who are going through some things in their body and therefore we believe that Jesus is, has the power to do what no other power can do. Uh, we uh, we believe that he can do it no matter what situation they're in, uh, critical care, hospice care, no matter what care they're receiving, Jesus cares for them. And we believe that his arms are stretching right now. He's moving the direction that he's laying hands on their infirmity. Somebody's being healed. Somebody's made, being made whole. They're getting out of their affliction. They're getting out of their place of suffering. And they're receiving Jesus strength and healing power right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, I want you also to believe with me today that Jesus has the ability, the authority to say there is no other name under heaven whereby which man must be saved. It got to be Jesus. So we believe that even right now. And I want you to believe with me that uh, there's some people who need Jesus and Jesus is more than able. That he's moving in the direction that his arms are still out straight. Somebody today is having visitation by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They're finding out just how good Jesus really is to them. They're being baptized in the blood of the Lamb. Their sins are being washed. Their transgressions are being forgiven. Their iniquities are being blotted out. They're putting Jesus on today and falling in love with him this very hour, this very moment, declaring Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. If you believe with me on the day that Jesus is healing, he's saved and he's delivering, you ought to shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For all you've done, we thank you. For all you're doing, we thank you, Jesus, for just being uh, our Good shepherd, we thank you and we give him praise. Uh, listen, it's giving time in the house of the Lord. Uh, we ought to give unto Jesus that Jesus has given unto us. The Bible said, Let us not give grudgingly, nor in necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Uh, it is time that we give unto Jesus. If you are able to give electronically and you so choose to do so, have a heart to do so, reach out to us at clj1.org. Uh, there you'll find some avenues that you might be able to give electronically. Also, you can reach out to us at the same website, clj1.org, if you need to make arrangements that you might be able to facilitate the giving of your offering. Um, and we thank Jesus for you in advance. Those of you who have given toward our 2022 Jesus purpose, we thank Jesus for you. We're rapidly and vastly moving toward the end of uh, of what been <laughs> toward the end or the summation of what we've been working on. So I encourage you to prayerfully consider doing so if you have not done so. Uh, and I believe that Jesus, He never fails, and that's good enough for me. If you pray about it, Jesus said, "Don't do it." Well always respond to his voice but i believe that god god is faithful and he'll do exactly what he said and he will not uh cause his word to come back void but it will fulfill it will prosper so i thank jesus for you again that's clj1.org if you need to mail those offerings you can mail them at 2356 north station street in indianapolis indiana 46218 again that's church of jesus 2356 north station street in indianapolis indiana 46218 and we thank jesus for you and we love you in jesus name oh there's still power in the name of Jesus. It's good to know who Jesus is. Aren't you glad about him? Listen, my prayer for you on today is this.
I'm praying that not only that you be in response to the voice of Jesus, but that you be on time. That you be on time. That's why we can declare things I used to do, I don't have to do anymore, and places I used to do, I don't have to go anymore. It's not because those places don't exist. It's because Jesus' voice always puts you in the right place. It always puts you on time. It's called grace. And I'm praying his grace covers you. I'm praying his grace keeps you. I'm praying his grace comforts you. And even right now, you see that there's victory and the victory is already yours in the name of Jesus. Listen, I love you, but Jesus, he, he loves you best. You don't have to worry about tomorrow because Jesus is with you today. Jesus is good. Jesus is good. Yes, he is. Have a beautiful day in Jesus.